Okay, so as Lexi said, um, my name is Lily, um, and today we'll be talking about monitoring Kubernetes with the Prometheus operator. Um, so as Lexi already mentioned, I um, am currently a principal software engineer at Red Hat, but I used to work at Pinfall as well. Um, and I'm an engineer in the OpenShift and cluster monitoring team. And we um, work on OpenShift being the Red Hat's Kubernetes product. Um, I'm also the maintainer and contributor um, of Prometheus operator, Kube Prometheus and Kube state metrics to name a few, just to mention why I'm qualified sort of to do this talk. So um, let's see, let's get started then. Um, so we'll briefly talk about Prometheus because I'm sure most of you have already came across Prometheus by now. And there are many great talks and resources out there to explain the, to explain the inner workings of Prometheus very well. So we'll just briefly do a summary here. Um, I borrowed this, um, graph off of um, Prometheus um, website. So let's just do a very quick short summary. So essentially Prometheus takes care of um, target discovery. Um, it's a monitoring um, project and the target being usually your application, for example, or your infrastructure workload. It also pulls the metrics um, every time interval and stores those metrics um, as time series in a custom time series database. We call it TSDB. Um, another thing, important thing that it does, it also um, evaluates alerting rules and pushes those alerts to alert manager. Um, alert manager then takes care of proxying these alerts um, to the correct receivers that you configure, but Prometheus does the actual alerting evaluation. And that's something that a lot of people don't necessarily realize because the alert manager name is so misleading. Um, and the alerting rules are actually stored in Prometheus itself, and this will become relevant um, at a later point. And basically Prometheus evaluates them against the data that is stored in the time series database. So um, essentially the metrics. So that's briefly about Prometheus, um, but let's move on to the um, topic of today, which is Prometheus operator. So Prometheus operator um, is part of the Prometheus operator org actually. Um, and it consists of two projects right now, um, Prometheus Operator and Kube Prometheus. And um, we have over 5K stars, which is of course the most important metric out there. Um, and both projects have a huge adoption rate and we recently even added the adopters file. So if you're using the project or your company uses the project, please add yourself to the adopters files, which is located in the Prometheus Operator. So let's start with the operator itself um and briefly go through that so the operator actually um, was one of the first kubernetes operators in general which was created by coros uh, which also coined the term operator as we know it today and essentially what prometheus operator does it, it manages configures and operators monitoring components within your kubernetes clusters it also provides a very powerful multi-tenancy knobs and features and gives you the ability to self-service your monitoring, essentially. We also have a really cool logo that was um, donated to us by Bianca. And yeah, we're now a very fancy project. So um, to for the operator to be able to actually manage the monitoring components, um, you need to create uh, custom resources as a user. And Prometheus custom resources um, are the following ones, and we'll go look at each one of those and what they do in the next few slides. So let's start with the most important one, which is the Prometheus custom resource. So what the Prometheus custom resource does is um, it basically implement, um, it configures, manages Prometheus via a stateful set. So basically the operator um, based on your configuration, creates a stateful set depending on how many replicas you choose, and it deploys those and manages it for you. Some interesting fields in the Prometheus spec um, that you should be configuring are um, selector, which basically selects which objects it should pick up, and you can match on um, labels there. Um, another one is the alerting field, which tells Prometheus which alert manager endpoints it should push the alerts to, which is the um, thing we mentioned earlier. 
And another one which is very, very useful is resources. Because as we know, Prometheus is really just a database um, and you should treat it as such and figure out how much data you'll be working with and size that accordingly. And finally, the um, as we mentioned, the replicas. So with no sharding enabled, um, you should choose roughly two replicas to have a um, highly available setup. Um, or if you have, especially if you have more than one node cluster. Um, and for a full list of all the APIs and all the fields we have, you can have a look at our uh, Prometheus operator um, API doc, which I'll, um, there's a link to it at the very end. And these are just some of the things that um, you can configure. Um, the next one to look at is the alert manager resource. Um, essentially, as with the Prometheus one, um, alert manager is configured, deployed, and managed uh, via stateful set deployment. You can also, it, but what it does, in, uh, um, also it configures the alert manager instances to talk to each other. Um, so alert managers have a gossip protocol to synchronize the instances of an alert manager cluster. Um, so it it does that because you want to um, have not duplicated notifications sent out. So essentially, they do sort of like a gossip amongst each other to prevent those things, as you don't want to be paged three times for the same thing. And Prometheus operator handles that configuration. So the once you have your Prometheus up and your alert manager up um, via the custom resources, you next are interested in actually monitoring your things. So um, for those things, the service monitor and the pod monitor custom resources are needed. So what they actually do is let you configure the targets to monitor um, without needing to learn a Prometheus specific configuration. So essentially it's very simple fields, which um, lets you very easily monitor things. So we often get asked the question, what's the difference between the service monitor and the pod monitor? And really it's just that the pod monitor is relatively new um, and we historically had only service monitor. So people defaulted of course to service monitor, um, but we now frequently get those questions. And really what a service monitor does is it selects uh, via label matcher um, and we'll see that at the very end it selects all the services that match those labels and in turn scrape each of the pod that backs those service. And the pod monitor directly selects pods. Um, so that is the difference between them. It depends on your setup. Um, a couple of interesting things you should be configuring, um, especially if you can control all, all the service monitors or the pod monitors um, are the sample and target limits. So basically what they do is you um, this is useful when you're trying to like limit the amount of data a single configuration can produce. Um, so it's super useful, like I said, in a multi-tenant environment or when you um, basically don't know what your users are up to to do some kind of high unbound cardinality series. And they're a fairly recent um, addition. So um, how do, does it actually work, right? How do the service monitor and the pod monitor actually work? Um, after the resource is created by the user, so let's say you specify a service monitor or a pod monitor for your application, um, that gets picked up by the Prometheus operator, which in turn creates a secret, a Kubernetes secret, uh, with the content um, of the target discovery. As we mentioned, it translates everything to the Prometheus specification. And then the config reloader sidecar, which um, runs along Prometheus, watches that um, target discovery secrets and reloads Prometheus if there were any changes to those secrets. So there is no real magic to it. It's, um, it just basically boils down to actual Kubernetes objects. Um, and we use a secret as your targets can contain uh, sensitive information. Um, next up, we have Prometheus rule. Um, so the Prometheus rule is used to create alerting and recording rules. Um, alerting rules, as the name suggests, are used for Prometheus to evaluate alerts uh, by creating a rule when you should be paged about your workloads. So um, always make sure to create your alerts that are simple and um, don't do as many. And um, of course, always alert on symptoms and not causes. And uh, recording rules on the um, other side are 
um, rules that basically allow you to pre-compute um, frequently needed or expensive expressions. So they basically save their result as a new time series. So you don't have to um, save as much compute. So you basically save compute. Um, and how do those work? Um, so in turn, when you create a Prometheus rule, whether it's an, whether it has alerting or recording rules, um, the Prometheus operator, depending on which namespace it watches, um, and if you've created one in the, that namespace, it picks up that custom resource and then it bin packs all the rules um, that you've specified into a config map or multiple config maps, depending on the size of the rules. And then essentially mounts those config maps. Um, there can be multiple into the Prometheus pod. And the config map reloader sidecar, um, which we talked about earlier, watches for any of those changes and again, reloads Prometheus on them. So again, it's really important information for whenever you need to debug something um, that goes wrong in case something doesn't get picked up like a Prometheus role or a service monitor. Um, one of our newer custom resource that we added recently um, is the probe custom resource. And what it is, it is essentially, is, as the name suggests, it lets you configure how groups of static targets or ingresses should be monitored. Um, you do need to deploy something like the black box exporter, for example, for it to work. Um, and it's one of our newest ones. So um, we have been using it as well, and it's really powerful. Um, and the latest one, which is not, v1 as technically all the ones uh, that i've mentioned are stable resources um, but the alert manager config which is also a custom resource is really great for multi-tenant environment and we plan on using it in openshift as well um, it basically allows you to configure subsections of alert manager and then you can connect to one alert manager essentially but you can select things like routing and receivers and let yours users um, who are, might not be admins of the alert manager, custom resource, for example, um, still let them configure those. It also allows you to configure inhibition rules. And inhibition rules in alert manager are um, things that actually mute all specified alerts that match on it um, whenever a, a group of alerts is firing. So for example, let's say that a node down alert is firing, um, you don't wanna be firing 10 other alerts after that. Um, so inhibition rules are really powerful for that. And uh, finally, the last custom resource that we have right now is the Thanos ruler. Um, Thanos is a project, part of the CNCF organization, and we use it for, um, we use the Thanos sidecar, which I'll mention later, and we use the Thanos ruler in our Prometheus operator, but you can uh, deploy a Thanos query to make like the full story. And essentially what the Thanos ruler is, is it's really powerful when you connect it to multiple Prometheus instances, for example. Um, and it does is, it evaluates Prometheus rules. Um, so the recording and the alerting rules, um, and you can connect it to a chosen query API. So you can connect it to any of the Prometheus instances you have. And again, with all the other components, it's really useful as a multi-tenant um, setup where multiple instances of Prometheus are deployed or where you want to um, essentially have a very powerful, um, huge cluster and you make it into um, a very specific multi-tenant environment. So there are a couple of cool overlooked features of Prometheus operator and this is just naming a couple, but I'm sure uh, there are more, many more. Um, and I want to briefly talk about them. So often people end up using just some custom resources out of the box, but um, one of the things that is really cool is automated sharding. So um, sharding already exists in Prometheus, but what we do is we essentially distribute the loads automatically across the number of shards specified. Um, and that, that's really, really nice. Um, and we do get some users using it, but it definitely needs a bit more. Um, love and a bit more, um, yeah. Um, the next one is the enforced namespace label. This is part of the Prometheus spec. And um, essentially what it is, is that it add, enforces adding a namespace label for each of your alerting 
um, and metric that a user creates. And this is really great for enforcing tenancy per namespace. So a user can never alert on something that is outside of their namespace, essentially. And another one to note, as I mentioned earlier, is the um, Thanos sidecar. You essentially add it to Prometheus and you enable object storage and you can connect it with um, into a really powerful configuration. And this is something we heavily use in OpenShift as well. So now that we've learned about Prometheus operator, um, let's have a look at the other project um, in the same organization, which is the Cube Prometheus. So Cube Prometheus, as, as the name applies, is essentially a group of manifests that lets you easily modif um, monitor your Kubernetes workloads out of the box. Um, so things like etcd, API server, kubelet, the monitoring components itself, and many more things. But what it does, it also provides all of these manifests in form of JSON. Um, for those of you who don't know, JSON is a data templating language uh, that extends JSON. And by doing this, it really allows you to customize your experience. For example, in OpenShift, we bring in Cube Prometheus, but we do a very specific OpenShift customizations and um, we do have links to this, how this can be done for your environment. So you can essentially customize your workload monitoring. So as we mentioned, it brings a lot of things. So let's see exactly what those things are. So as mentioned before, there, these are the Kubernetes own workloads, but it really all starts with deploying Prometheus operator. So the Kube Prometheus stack first deploys the Prometheus operator deployment. Um, with all the custom uh, resource definitions, it registers and out of the box, it creates a Prometheus HA setup and an HA of alert manager. So two replicas of Prometheus and three replicas of alert manager. We also install cube state metrics, um, which helps us provide an insight into your Kubernetes cluster by exporting the metrics about all the Kubernetes resources. Um, also the node exporter, which um, provides the OS and hardware metrics. And we also monitor all the Kubernetes components. So essentially the kubelet, the etcd, um, all of those, and the monitoring components, because you should always be monitoring your monitoring system as well. Otherwise you can't know it's reliable. We also provide, uh, provide a bunch of Grafana dashboards and alerting and recording rules out of the box for all the Kubernetes um, things as well. So to visualize this a bit better, um, this is my own personal cluster and um, I have the latest Kube Prometheus deployed. And essentially this is what we see in terms of pods and service monitors. So we have the service monitors as we mentioned are the targets um, that are being monitored. And these are all the pods that are running um, inside of my cluster, for example. And like I said, you can customize this um, using uh, JSON it, or you can just customize the manifests. And we also have um, customize, I think, um, with a K. Um, but don't ask me much about that. Um, but we do are very much open to issues and suggestions. So um, feel free to send some our way. So now that we've seen um, how the Kubernetes own workloads are monitored. Um, let's see how you would monitor your own applications. So we monitor the monitoring system, we monitor Kubernetes, but how do you monitor your applications? So it's quite fairly simple, really. Um, as we mentioned, we have our service monitor on the very right side here, which has um, the matching labels highlighted. And what that matches is our service, um, which is in the middle. And the service monitor in the middle has the selector that matches all the pods, which in turn are deployed by the example deployment. So we also expose the metrics port in the service and that's a, that's all the magic. Um, everything else is taken care of by Prometheus operator and um, your application only needs to expose the slash metrics endpoint. Um, and then it's picked up by Prometheus itself. So to Often, um, things don't work out of the box. If you, for example, misconfigured some labels 
And the best way to go around troubleshooting is to go to the slash tar um, to the Prometheus UI and to the slash targets page. And here you will see all your targets that Prometheus discovered or in my turn couldn't discover. Um, so in the case of the screenshot, for example, um, here, Prometheus just couldn't scrape the Thanos sidecar. Um, in my case, it was a network issue and a misconfiguration. Um, but it's always the first thing I look at whenever someone reports um, that just Prometheus metrics are not being able to be found. So essentially for troubleshooting, um, you can set your uh, debug log level on Prometheus operator to see like, for example, which service monitors, pod monitors, or Prometheus rules were picked up. You can also use this handy command to see what is actually in the secret itself that is created by Prometheus operator. So you can do that by grabbing the service monitor, pod monitor, or other resource name. And we also have this uh, linter tool. Um, so it's essentially a way to validate your custom resources. You can add it as part of your CI or um, just do it for locally. So um, as a conclusion, I think we all learned a bit about the basics of Kubernetes monitoring and how to monitor your workloads with Prometheus operator. Um, and we'll have a look at also some helpful um, docs and where you can ask for help. So essentially we have a new website coming soon. I think Matthias is working on it now. Um, so you can bookmark it and we'll let you know when it's ready. Um, it should contain things like um, guides and blog posts, any talks we do, um, and just in general, a good place for Prometheus operator, but also um, Prometheus itself. We also have a section in our um, GitHub where we have troubleshooting docs. So feel free to contribute as well if you found any good troubleshooting tips. Um, we have a Slack channel on the Kubernetes Slack, uh, the Prometheus operator, and also the Prometheus operator dev in case you're contributing something. Uh, you can always open an issue on GitHub on either of the repos. We also have discussions enabled. Um, so that's always really a great help. Um, and I also compiled some useful docs or links to things. So things we often get asked. Um, so I, I think I'll share my slides afterwards and you can click around. We also recently started uh, creating a Wiki for runbooks for alerts that is located in the Prometheus project and anyone can edit that and add their own runbooks and it's essentially community managed. 